You hate drama channels making videos about you. Do influencers sell their souls? Have you witnessed anything scary in the influencer world? Do you regret getting a BBL? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> How are you guys doing this Gorga day? I am feeling my goth fantasy. I'm feeling sorrowful -so and sorgo. What do you guys think? Do you guys do you guys like it? Do we like the glam? Do we like this little dark energy? Do we like this energy? Do we feel very vampire? Say it out loud. Vampire. I'm kind of obsessed. Anyways, guys, what is up? How are you guys doing today? I haven't uploaded it in a little bit, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a little catch up, like a little Q and A, little uh, addressing rumors uh, <laughs> kind of situation. Just kind of talking about different things I haven't really talked about as much, and just kind of clearing there a little bit more than I have about these different topics in the past. So that's what we're kind of doing. We're gonna be doing a addressing rumors. Video. And I screenshot a bunch of yum because y'all nosy and I you know what I love that about you I love that about you guys that you're so nosy. I love that about you. I dare I dare So if you guys are nosy perras like me and you guys want to know the tea about certain different things going on Then keep on watching that's what today's is going to be sir So let's get into it as always if you guys like this video if you guys don't me Please don't make you watch it. Enjoy with that. But if you guys do like this video if you guys like Chismosas, como yo. <laughs> if you guys like the gays, can you drop me off at the bus stop? Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's go and get started on our first question, assumption, rumor about me. I'm not gonna read people's names off, of course. I don't ever really need read people's names off during these kind of videos. You just never know. You just never know, you know? So first question first, do you ever feel weird getting noticed in public? Honestly, in the past, I used to feel a little bit odd. I'm not gonna lie, I used to feel a little weird getting recognized because I didn't understand the concept of it. I was like, why are people coming up to me? I don't get it. Like, I just didn't understand uh, what it was <laughs> for a long time. Now, honestly, I'm pretty used to it. I've been doing this for, what, uh, since 2014. So almost eight years now, seven years? I would say seven years. Uh, so it's been a long, 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 long time that I've been doing it. So whenever people come to me, I'm honestly really, really excited and super stoked to meet you guys. So if you ever see me in public at all, come up to me, say hi, let's take a photo, let's have a chat. I'm always down, unless, I'm sitting down eating with my family or friends. That's the only time I don't want to take photos with anyone. Cause I'm like, you know, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, I'm in like a private setting. If I'm eating, sitting down with people, like I'm not gonna like stop eating, get up, take photos, do the whole thing. Cause I think it's rude to that, the people that I'm with. So I never really do that. I never really get up when I'm eating. But what I always say is like, absolutely after I'm done eating, let's take a photo. So anytime, like I'm always absolutely down to take a photo, talk, do the whole thing. Don't mind. <laughs> and honestly, I really like it too because I feel like it's like we have a community. You know, when I see you out and about and you see me and we talk, I'm like, oh my God, that's what you look like. Cause I feel like you guys get to see me but I don't really get to see you as much. So it's nice to kind of put faces to screen names and names into comments. So I really, really enjoy seeing you guys in real life. Next one, you hate drama channels making videos about you. Hmm. Hmm. Y'all want the real tea. Honestly, I think I'm a little bit indifferent about it now. I think I used to be a little bit more offended back in the days. Like I would be so much more like caught up in the drama. I was a lot more like paying attention to it. I don't really pay attention to it as much now. Do I love seeing my name plastered and my face plastered on drama channel videos? I don't, I can't say that I love it and seeing it like, yay, go Manny, you problematic whore. Boo, you whore. Like I'm not obsessed with that, you know? I don't love seeing my face and name on drama <laughs> at all. But I think that now it's like, I understand that a lot of the times, like they're just trying to get a story out there. They're just trying to get their tea out there. They want to have, you know, their thing going on with their audience. Like I get it, like I get it. So I'm a little more understanding nowadays. And I'm actually friends with a lot of drama channels and tea channels and commentary channels and stuff like that. And I think becoming friends with them over the last couple years, I kind of see a little bit more of their side uh, when it comes to different things. So I'm always like, okay, I understand, I understand. So I'm a lot more understanding when it comes to uh, commentary channels and drama channels and things like that. Whereas in the past I'd be like, no, they don't like me, I fucking hate 
Megan. I used to hate it, you know? And now I'm just like, oh, okay, like I understand where they're coming from. I mean, there's definitely channels I don't like, like straight up there are people in the drama community that I don't like, absolutely for sure. But for the most part, I've had really, really great interactions with so many people in the commentary and drama community. So I don't get annoyed when I see it. Am I happy when I see it? No, but I'm, am I pissed off? Like, no. Would you date Harry Jousey? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love Harry. I think he's so great. I'm so happy we've got to flourish a friendship. I'm like, I honestly think he's really, really cool. Super funny and honestly a very sweet and genuine guy. He does a lot of philanthropic work. Like I genuinely like him as a person. I just think Jer Jerry, I combine Harry and J Harry Dowsey to be Jerry. I think that Harry is the kind of guy that like if I fell for him, he would break my heart in a fucking second. Like, he's just cool. Like, he's a cool, handsome, tall man that I'm like, no, I can't. Like, it's a recipe disaster for me, so I wouldn't be able to date him. Like, there's just no way. There is no freaking way I could date Harry. Like, there's just no chance in hell vibes. It's just not happening. But um, I love to see Harry. Love hanging out with him. Love filming content with him. So I'm always down to hang out and, you know, do stupid crap with him because he it genuinely is really fun and cool to hang around with. And if you guys ever wonder, like, if Harry is cool and seems like a s sweet guy in person, he really, really is, and I get really genuine energy from him every time I see him. So for me, I'm very energy sensitive in that way where it's like, I, like I'll like i like you immediately or I won't like you immediately. Like the vibes, I'm very vibey. Caught a vibe. You know, I'm very vibey when it comes to things like that. So I get good energy from him. So I will continue hanging out with him. Do you think Laura's gonna have kids? <laughs> Now it's time to feel the real tea. Not that, you guys, not that question. Do I think Laura's gonna have kids? I do eventually think she'll have kids. For a long time, she didn't want kids. You know, you can obviously follow Laura Lee. That's my bestie out there, full coverage co-host. That's my baddie. I think that eventually she'll wanna have kids and she'll have kids eventually. But you know, it's just, it's, timing's hard. Like I feel like no one's ever really prepared for a kid, of course, but I think there's a lot of things like going on in life and it's like, well, I don't feel like it's my time, like it's the time yet. Maybe she's just not there yet, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you gotta let people do their thing in their own time, you know? It's all like you're gonna be taking care of the kid, <laughs> okay? So you gotta give people time to do it themselves, but I think that eventually her and Tyler will have a kid. And honestly, if they do, I don't know what I'll do. I'll like literally freak out. I would be the best gay uncle ever. I don't know, I, I really don't know. Like I, will, I would like love that kid like it's my own, you know what I mean? So they would be the most amazing parents. Like I, I see how they are with Aaron and they would be incredible parents and I hope that a little soul is blessed enough to be their kid. Like I would be ecstatic. Like I would fucking freak out. Could you imagine? Like, are you kidding? My bestie having a kid, I would lose it. <laughs> Baby, it's gone. Do you regret getting a BBL? <laughs> So we're really, we're really pointing fingers on this, on this assumptions video, aren't we? Um, do I regret getting BBL? I don't actually, I really, really don't. For me, I got a BBL so long ago. Like my BBL, it wasn't recently. Like it's not like a lot of people nowadays getting BBLs like where it's like pretty within the last like two years. I got mine like five years ago, five or six maybe. So it's been a long time for me. I've just had it for so long. I like the results. I feel like my butt looks plump. I like how my stomach looks for sometimes depending on the day and what I've eaten. For the most part, like I've liked my results and I think that they got a lot when they went in there, you know? I think that the doctor got a lot. He sure did and I, he, he, there could be more gotten. There could be more gotten, it's been five years. But overall, I don't work at my BBL at all. I know a lot of people like will see on TikTok, like, there's like on TikTok, there's like people talking about their horror stories with their BBLs and it, honestly, that, that freaks me out. I'm not gonna lie. Like to seeing people talk about their horror stories of BBLs and like how it's a super dangerous surgery and how people, you can like, like really get a bad like blood puncture and clots and stuff like that and how deadly it is. I didn't know all that. <laughs> when I went into my BBL. I mean, of course I knew like a, a good amount, I researched it, but I just didn't know that it was like to that degree of like how dangerous of a procedure it is. So I'm never going to be here being like, you guys should get BBL, haha. Uh -huh. Like absolutely not. You guys of course can do whatever you want with your own body, but please research it the best that you can to the best of your abilities. If you ever wanna get anything done, cosmetic surgery, surgery in general, you know, it's whatever you want to do, hell yeah, I do that for you. But, you know, be smart about it, make smart decisions and really, really research it and research your doctor and find out and like see reviews and see but before and after so there's so many things that goes behind getting like an actual surgery because I've gotten several now in the last several years like last you know five six seven so just be careful you know just be really really careful and make sure you want it for you and not because someone's 
you feel like pressured by society or someone in your life that you have to get the surgery to feel like you fit in, you don't. No one needs fucking surgery to fit into anything. Like it's ridiculous. Do it because you genuinely want to do it. You know what I mean? Do influencers sell their souls? Have you witnessed anything scary in the influencer world? So I've seen recently actually, I think it was David Dobrik who actually talked about this in a podcast with Zane and Heath. A huge fan of their podcast, by the way, it's amazing. Now that I have a podcast of my own, I'm always like looking at people's podcasts. I'm always like, oh my God, it's so good. They have a great podcast. But he was talking about like this really, really weird experience. You guys have to check it out to be verbatim because I didn't really read into the story as much. It was basically about like how he had like a friend who was saying that like his friend's mom was like, sacrifice me to become successful. And like some guy like was like talking to her and was like, you know, promising her fame for something. And it was like some really, really weird, like really weird thing, like very like demonic shit that he was talking about. And he said that he's kept it in for years. I mean, I don't know if it's true. I have no idea. I don't know David like that. I don't know if it's a, it's accurate or if it's not accurate. I don't even know the story fully, but I can say wholeheartedly that I've never personally experienced anything of that caliber at all. Mind you, I'm not like a celebrity. I'm not like in that world of influencers, like lifestyle influencers, like huge, 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 huge people. I'm not in that world. So I don't even know. I'm like literally a beauty guru here, living in the fantasy, you know what I mean? But could there be like something crazy, demonic, soul sucking situations in Hollywood? There could, you know, I, firmly believe in God. That means I believe in the devil and I believe that, you know, there's definitely some dark energies and good energies at work all the time in every situation. So, I mean, could there be something like that? I'm sure there could be, but it's scary to think about. Like, it's a really, really scary thing to think that there could be some like, you know, selling your soul for fame literally and not just like a figure of speech because that's very much used in figure of speeches all the time. Like, oh, you sold your soul for fame. It's like, okay, uh -huh. you know what I mean? But it's like actually like murdering someone, making a deal with the devil, and becoming famous, like, I don't, I don't know. It's a very intense, like, that's a huge conspiracy. I, I kind of want to dive into it, because I am definitely interested in it, but I remember seeing, like, a brief little clip of it on, like, TikTok, I think. But I remember thinking, like, what the f I've never heard of anything like that, never seen anything like that, don't know how it is, you know, you got, if you trust David, then take his word for it, if you don't, then you don't. But I, I don't know, like, I have no idea what to think, I have no idea what to even, like say about it, cause I've never heard of anything like that, but it's scary. Like, honestly, it's really scary to think about. Like that really fucking freaks me out. Cause I believe that there's like some bad energies. Like I've never played with like a Ouija board. I never will play with the Ouija board. Like I definitely believe in like you inviting negative energy negative spirits, all that kind of stuff. Like it will come back to you. And it like scares me so much. Like when it comes to, it comes to like scary movies, like I can watch like some scary movies, but like when it comes to like demonic possession and you know, things like that, I'm like, I'm out. Like, I just feel like it just, it just seems too real to me. Like, I totally believe that things like that can happen because I'm religious. So I'm like, mm -mm, I banish thee. No cucuis in my casita. Like, absolutely not. So could it happen? Absolutely. But I've never heard of it personally. Like, I don't know. It just like really scares me to be honest. Do you still think outer dimension fits all skin tones in quotes? Um, first of all, I actually never said that it fits all skin tones. I said that it would fit a lot of skin tones. In case you guys do not know, outer dimension is my uh, contra palette with Lunar Beauty. And this is what she looks like right here. Obviously in bright lighting, that's what she looks like right there. Has 10 shades in it. So there was like a little bit of a situation when it came to outer dimension. Some people were saying that I wasn't inclusive enough. You know, it became like a kind of situation. And I honestly like was understanding of where people were coming from a hundred percent. And I apologize for the way I reacted about it because I was kind of being a bitch on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of being a bitch about it. And it's hard. It's hard to hear when like something you've worked really, 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 really hard on isn't like seen as enough. There's just something about it like in your head that you just like makes you see red. Cause I actually sent out my deepest shades to friends of mine who have deep complexions to black creators. And I was like, can you please give me some opinions on these and see what you guys think and try them out. And I literally paid them. I was like, I will pay you to give me your opinions. I'm not super tan. I'm not black. I do not know a ton about deep complexions, but I wanted to do the best that I could. So I reached out to creators who did know, who were black. And they gave me such great feedback and great advice. And I went with that route. And that's what I ended up creating was because they gave me great advice. And I literally did change some things because of their amazing advice that they had given me. So not only was I trying to be as inclusive as possible, I was seeking out help from black creators, which I needed, like I needed help for it. So for me, is it gonna fit everyone ever? 
No, it's not gonna fit everyone ever, but I think that for what's on the market, I think that I did the best job I possibly could. I genuinely do, and I can't apologize for doing the best that I could. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna continue to do the best that I can, and I love hearing people's feedback when it comes to products that I have, and you know, I, again, can't say that's gonna fit everyone ever, but do I think that it's a good job, especially when it's comparison to what's on the market out there? I do, like I really do, and I would not have came out with it if I didn't think that. So is that not enough for people? for sure like I, I and I recognize that and I understand that you don't have to agree with me like I totally get it but that doesn't mean that I didn't try my hardest to come out with something inclusive as possible especially with one palette with 10 shades that you can mix and match and find something that was custom for you you know with the two mixing shades in the middle so I did really try my best I genuinely did but I of course always appreciate feedback as long as it's not coming at me and like a really, really negative, nasty way. Like as soon as people started saying like, you hate black creators because you are not inclusive. I'm like, okay, see there, this is where there's a disconnect. I'm like, people take it so far that it's like, obviously that's not true. I did try. I'm always continuing to grow and learn and I appreciate constructive feedback, always. But all the shades are a lot deeper than they look in the pan, by the way. Like they're a lot deeper, they're much, have, they have a lot more depth. I think a lot of people didn't know that until they started getting it. I saw like black creators reviewing it and makeup artists reviewing it and they were like, holy crap, this is sickening. It's way deeper and I'm like, see, I told you. So um, yeah, you just, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta give it a chance. You gotta give it a chance. For sure. <laughs> Next, a question, assumption, rumor that I hate the Ace family. False, I don't hate them. Honestly, like I don't I don't hate anyone. It's actually funny, like, cause I was actually talking about this. Yesterday with Laura, we were talking about like how we've talked, we talked about the Ace family before on full coverage and we've covered different things when it came to them. And a lot of the times, actually most of the time, <laughs> uh, we get sent stories that you guys want us to cover, you know? So what we'll do is we'll cover things for you guys cause you guys are asking us to cover it. But a lot of the times like we don't, like we're not paying attention to the Ace family. Like we're not like, honed in on the Ace family, like, oh my God, we care. And we're gonna report on them every single time. Like, we don't care like that. Like, we're not, I think there's, there might be a disconnect in that way. Cause I don't want people to think that we like hate them or we hate people. It's like, I think that for us, it's like, we're creators. We've been in this space for a long time. That's where our opinion's coming from as people who are in, creators who are in LA, who are influencers, who have met a lot of these people. And that's kind of where we're coming from. We know a lot of people, a lot of things going on behind the scenes. We've heard a lot of stories behind the scenes. So that's a lot of the times where our opinion is coming from. But at the end of the day, like we don't really like care if that makes sense. Like we don't care enough about their lives where we're like following and honed in on what's going on. Like we we literally are just like, like if you guys send us a story, we'll talk about it, you know? And if you don't, then we won't. Like that's just that's just kind of what it is for us. So I don't hate the Ace family. Like I really don't. Like I hope that they have learned many lessons along the way. I'm sure it's been a very, very tough ride for them, but like hating them would mean that I would care a lot about them, but I don't, so I don't hate them. Like, I don't care. You know, when people do shitty things, they get called out for it. And hopefully they grow and they learn and they move on. Like, I don't, I'm not invested like that. Me and Lord, neither of us are. Like, we don't care. <laughs> and I don't want it to sound like we're like harsh, like we don't care about them, we don't care about people. But like, we just have a lot going on in our own lives. And like, honestly, following along with people's lives like that, honed in like that, it, it takes too much work, takes too much energy, and I'm just not willing to give in. I know Laura's not either. So we definitely don't hate the Ace family. We're just reporting on things going on in the space. Take it or leave it. You know, we're, full, we're fools covering things. Like that's literally what we do. <laughs> you have some trauma surrounding relationships that, and that's why you're single. Um, uh, I would say that's a correct assumption to be going on this. I would say that it's a correct assumption about May because like, I do. <laughs> I feel like it's, you know, relationships for me, it's tough. It's, it's always been really, really hard for me. I don't really know where I fit in when it comes to relationships. Sometimes I'm like really into someone, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes one thing can set me off or I don't like them at all. And I'm like relieved that they don't like me anymore. You know, and like, I think it's I'm comfortable with being single, I'm comfortable, because that's, that's all I've ever known is being single and being self-sufficient in that way and self-soothing. So the idea of a relationship is, is very scary, to be honest. I would like to experience it, of course, but it, it does freak me out because I've never experienced it before and I don't know what goes behind it. Like, I don't want to change for a relationship either. Like, I don't want, like people change in a relationship a lot of people do and I like me now. I don't I don't want to change, you know? So I don't know. I don't I don't want to change for a relationship, if that makes any sense. Like I don't want to change for no man. And you know, knowing that I don't want to change for man, I'm sure that's gonna help me not change for no man. But um the whole thing it kind of freaks me out. Like I don't know. Like, how do you date? <laughs> I don't know. So the whole idea of it is like really freaky to me. Like it's very, very freaky to me. You know, here we are. <laughs> Single and Slightly ready to mingle at times. You know, it depends. It depends on the vibes. I used to be a lot more open when it came to relationships and 
the idea of dating and I feel like I've just been hurt so many times in the past that I've created these really, 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 really high walls that I just can't seem to bring down. But I'm gonna continue to work on it because I do want to experience that. Are you going to have to scale back Lunar Beauty launches? If yes, due to what? I don't think, no, I don't I don't think I'm gonna scale back any Lunar Beauty launches actually at all. The only issue that we have, of course, is the ports issue. Shipping is really, really, really tough. Things are taking so long. As you, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, like there's so many things like missing from stores because they're on ships. And like the ports are so congested that it's hard to get things. <laughs> I don't think for me, it's anything to do with scaling back. More so just being smart with my launches. You know, I want to continue to do really, really fun things that I personally really, really love. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Like my next launch won't be till like spring of next year. Mind you, it's already all done. Like I've already completed the color story, the names, the packaging, everything. It just takes that long for things. But I'm really excited for it. I actually have a new SKU in there, a product I've never come out with. So I'm excited to see how that does and see what you guys think of them. But I'm really, really excited. I'm, it's probably one of my favorite collections I've ever done coming up next, to be quite honest. It's probably one of my absolute favorites that I fucking love, to be quite honest. Like I'm literally obsessed. I'm literally obsessed. I'm obsessed. So um, I think that you guys will really, really like it too, but no, I'm not really going to be scaling back. I just want to continue to come out with things that I really, really personally love and enjoy. Okay, last one, last one for reals this time. How's the gym body routine going from a body self-conscious hoe? How do I get confident? Honestly, I wish I could tell you. Um, delusion? Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. I would say for me, it's delusion because I'm not super confident in my body. Like I'm just absolutely not. When I was in like high school, I was had like some weight on me. I've always been like kind of self-conscious about it. Like I've never been the kind of kid that would ever take off a shirt at the beach or at a pool or anything like that. Like I'm not that person. I've never been that person. Or maybe when I was little and not self-conscious, sure. But as I got older, I became more and more self-conscious. And like still now, like I don't want to take off my shirt in public. None of that stuff. I just think for me, like the gym is like where I go for mental stability. I just kind of need it at this point because I do get stressed about a lot of things in my life. Like constantly I do so much that I get stressed. And so I need the gym to help relieve some of that stress and you know, serotonin boosting and stuff like that. So for me, it's not even about like having a hot body or doing that. It's more so about my mental, trying to help me mentally. And I think that with time it'll come. Like I think that my body has gotten nicer as I kept going to the gym. I think that's just like a product of working out, even though I was working out for my headspace. So actually I don't I don't really know when it comes to how do I get confident. Like I don't know. I wish I knew because I would also like to <laughs> as well. If you guys have any secrets to confidence, please leave them in the comments. I would love to read them. I think it's one of those like fake it till you make it things for me. At least it's been like that for me. I've always kind of faked it till I made it with so many things in life that I was like, oh well, maybe confidence that'll happen too. I'll fake it till I make it. And maybe I'll just get confident one day about my body. So far it's not there. <laughs> I'm not there yet, to be honest. And you know, for me, like, like I have like my, you know, you guys, I have a Lego. And that's a big part of my like body consciousness, I guess, self-consciousness. It's my vitiligo and like my spots grow and I get more and more self-conscious like daily, you know, about it. You know, and I try to battle it with like, oh, it's fine, I'm getting more used to it. But then a spot grows and I'm like, fuck, I'm back to square one. Or a new spot appears and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I get frustrated, you know? So I think that body confidence and like self-love, it's a journey. I don't think that everyone is confident in their bodies at all times or confident in themselves at all times. I think it just takes so much time and effort and constant effort and you have to work on it. You know, you have to actually actively work on it. Like if you wanna work on self-confidence, work on things that make you feel confident, you know? So I think that we have to put a lot of focus into it. Something I need to do as well, like honestly, let's keep each other accountable because I need to hold myself accountable as well when it comes to body stuff because I wanna feel good. You know, I wanna feel good about my body, but like I'm not at a spot yet where I do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm really good, I'm gonna do it. Let's do it together. Um, It's just hard. But um, anyways, guys, I think that's it. I think that's it for today's video. I just kind of wanted to jump on and do a little like kind of Q and A assumptions, rumors video. Um, I haven't done one of these in a couple months and you guys liked the last one. So I thought it would be fun to do another one. Let me know what you guys think of it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Actually, a lot of fun making it. Honestly, I think that these videos for me are like therapeutic, to be quite honest. I feel like it's just like a really genuine open conversation and I really enjoy doing them. And like, I feel like I need them. I need to do them more often, to be quite honest. Just like kind of talking and getting energy out. So I always felt like YouTube was like my diary in a way. And I think talking about things makes it easier for me. Like I'm able to handle it better when I get it out. So this is kind of like in my way, it's my journal. I'm not a journaler. I'm not like that kind of person that wants to write in a journal and do things, but YouTube in a way is like my journal. So, but anyway, that's everything for you guys. I'm just gonna have fun watching it. Have a great rest of the night or day wherever you guys are. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye. I love you. 
Okay, let's do this. I need to charge my fucking phone. I just feel so goth in this. I love it. I feel so hard goth. Why am I eye fucking twitching? It's twitching so bad. Like, if you guys notice it twitching, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> please recharge it. What? Should I do one more? Should I do one more? Should I do one more?